Welcome everyone to today's TDL member forum for August 2022. My name is Courtney Muma. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the deputy director for the Texas Digital Library. And I'm so glad you've joined us today. I'm joined also by Nicholas Woodward, our awesome senior software engineer, who will be helping out by sharing links in the chat today. As I welcome you to this shared virtual space, I wanna first acknowledge the physical places from which we join, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. TDL staff works fully remotely and we all join from our own specific places in Texas and beyond. I join from San Antonio, once known as Land of the Spirit Waters or Yanaguana. This part of Central Texas was the ancestral homeland to the Paella, a band that belongs to the Top Pilam Coahuiltecan Nation. These indigenous communities were among the traditional stewards of the land before the forcible removal. I invite you to share your own land acknowledgement in chat if you'd like to. So here is our brief agenda for today. Um, I'll be providing Christy Parks director update as she's on a well-earned vacation this week. And then I'll report out highlights on our services and projects and offer some community updates. And then we'll have a little time for questions and discussion at the end, at which point you're welcome to unmute, of course. So let's start with Christy's director update. TDL has selected a winning candidate for our digital librarian diversity resident position. Her name is Ima Oduwak, and she'll begin in mid-September. So you'll meet her and learn more about her in the coming months. As a reminder, for those of you unfamiliar with this ACRL Diversity Alliance position at TDL, this is a three-year position for an early career digital information professional, librarian, or archivist from a historically underrepresented minoritized community. The resident will explore and contribute to digital libraries within the context of the TDL consortium and its members and have opportunities to lead, create, collaborate, grow, belong, and discover within the profession and within our wonderful community. But we need your help. We've got two big opportunities for you and your institution to participate in and support this residency. First, we invite you to submit ideas for a rotation with our new digital librarian. The first year of the program is rotation based and those projects should be immersive projects that require two to four months project management and labor. Each rotation will have a rotation supervisor, which could be you. The resident themselves will choose their rotations in consultation with me, determined by their own interests and career path. We want to have some rotation ideas and suggestions available for the resident to choose from and get ideas from as soon as possible when she starts in September. So we're going to preference projects that allow the resident to benefit professionally from those rotations, which are beneficial to the TDL consortium and not just one member institution, and also offer an opportunity for the resident to lead and direct a project or part of a project from conception to completion. For more information about the responsibilities of the resident, their rotation supervisor, and more, please review the guidance document that we'll share in chat. Second, we are also asking for folks willing to serve as a mentor for the digital librarian in this residency position. I will work with the resident to match them up with an appropriate mentor from our pool of willing community members, and it can even be more than one. So if you love mentoring new folks and want to offer those skills in this way, we want to hear from you. And finally, if you have any questions about our diversity resident position, rotation opportunities, and mentorship, please email me. And I'll share my, uh, well, Nick will share my email in the chat. Thanks, Nick. So moving on to services and projects updates. Um, let's start with DSpace. So there has been a minor version release of DSpace, version 6.4, which came out in July. Um, our own Nick Woodward here contributed to the code. And in light of that release, TDL is working to determine the timing of an upgrade to all TDL hosted systems. We will talk more about that and other things at the next DSpace user group meeting, which will be held August 23rd at 10 a.m. We hope to see you there. 
Nick Woodward is nearing the end of a project to upgrade over 75 posted academic journals to OJS version 3.3 and move the journal sites into a new operating system and hosting environment. The project should conclude, and it's looking good, by the end of August and will mark the end of a major undertaking to migrate all of TDL's many systems across all of our services to a new operating system. Additionally, our next OJS user group meeting has been moved from September 1st to the following week to accommodate TDL's staff retreat, which we call Reboot, which is taking place on August 31st and September 1st. We'll paste some links into chat with info about user group meetings, and we hope you can join. Now for a digital preservation update. The Texas Digital Library and the UC San Diego Library, as some of you might remember, initiated a project in 2019 funded by an IMLS grant to explore the feasibility of a nationwide model for the first distributed digital preservation solution for sensitive and protective data, protected data. What the project team um, has learned will inform any service providers wishing to move ahead and develop those DDP services for private and sensitive data. We've published um, the paper, the final report, and we'll go ahead and provide that link. Additionally, um, we are excited at our web archiving meeting coming up to welcome Tanya Ulmer from the Internet Archives Archive It team. Um, that's going to be at the Web Archiving Texas Interest Group meeting next Thursday, August 25th at 11 a.m. And Tanya will be leading a discussion about quality assurance processes. So um, you're welcome to drop your questions into the agenda that we'll share here in chat in advance of the meeting to help Tanya prepare. Um, but you're also welcome just to bring your questions with you and ask them while you're there. Um, also, Tanya has asked if she could use someone's Archivit accounts with system privileges to demonstrate any processes discussed. So please do reach out and let me know if you'd like to volunteer your instance for the purposes of the meeting. Um, and we really hope you're able to join us for that. Um, next up, I have a DPLA update on behalf of Elliot Williams, who's also on vacation uh, starting today. So he wants to thank everyone who joined us for the Digital Collections Summer Love-In a few weeks ago. We had a great turnout for the event and heard about some really fascinating digital collections and exhibits. If you missed it, the recording is now available on YouTube and a copy of the links and slides are available in TDL's own DSpace repository. TDL members who participate in Text Hub had their metadata in DPLA updated last month with our July quarterly harvest. TDL is featuring some of those collections on our blog each quarter. This summer, we're highlighting the collections that Stephen F. Austin State University shares with DPLA, including their Jim Towns Dr. Pepper collection, as you can see here on the slide. We'll put a link to that blog post in chat, and I hope you'll spend some time exploring SFA's great collections in DPLA. So thank all of you for your participation in our OER support survey. We are so pleased with the number and quality of responses, and we're in the process of analyzing those results. And we'll share those results along with your um, with our recommendations with you at an upcoming forum. Your feedback is critical as we look for ways to improve our OER service to you. And please do subscribe to TDL's OER listserv so we can keep in close touch. We'll share a link in chat where you can sign up for our emails and select which lists you'd like to receive. And um, just another reminder about Open Texas. Um, I want to remind you about our keynotes in particular. The Open Texas Conference Committee is planning a really great open education conference. One keynote is Jasmine Roberts Cruz, a lecturer in the School of Communication at The Ohio State University, where she teaches in the areas of public relations writing, digital activism, and campaign strategy. Her advocacy work centers on the experiences of people of color, women, and queer communities. The other keynote for the conference is Dr. Karen Kangi-Losi, 
a program director with the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources, working to build open education leadership in post-secondary institutions across North America, and is also a co-founder of the Institute for Racially Just, Inclusive, and Open STEM. Registration to the Open Texas Conference is free and open to everyone, so you'll see more information in the chat for how to register and get involved. And now I'll move on to community updates on Leah DeForest's behalf. Um, <laughs> yes, today is all the Courtney show. <laughs> So uh, first, I want to start with a reminder about a webinar that we have tomorrow. Our partners at the Texas Oral History Association continue their webinar series with us tomorrow in 2022. Um, they started in partnership with Baylor University Institute for Oral History, um, a new online resource for researchers. The Texas Oral History Locator Database, um, or TOLD, utilizes survey data provided by the collection managers across the state of Texas to identify as many oral history collections as possible. Really hope you'll be able to join us tomorrow to learn more about TOLD, including how to use it and promote it with your own users. Anyone is welcome to join and we'll share a link about that in chat. Also coming up next week on August 25th at 2 p.m., the Research Integrity Working Group will host a session of The Dilemma Game, Professionalism and Integrity in Research, created by Aramis University in Rotterdam. This will be a fun way to examine research values and dilemmas that LIS professionals in particular might face. And we'll share a link in the agenda, um, to the agenda in chat here and how to register. We hope you'll be able to join us and support the hard work that the Research Integrity Working Group has put into organizing this event. Finally, here's a reminder um, that we have our usual slate of member group meetings this month and next, and we hope you can join us if you can. These meetings are, of course, open to anyone, and please note that some of our events do require registration. All of these meetings and events are free and open to anyone, and you're always welcome to invite your campus partners and non-TDL member colleagues in your network to join us. They're always welcome. So with that, we have plenty of time for questions, if anyone has any. Um, and while you get your questions ready, I want to remind folks about the TDL suggestion box. If you have any feedback or suggestions you'd like to give to TDL, we hope you'll use the suggestion box to communicate with us. Um, and a reminder that comments made through the suggestion box can be anonymous if, if you choose, and we'll likely bring up topics that come up in the suggestion box in future forums. In fact, we have one topic that came up from the last forum that we were going to talk about today, but given our short staff, we're going to wait until next month. So let me get into chat here and see if there are any questions. Oh, Susan, Susan Hoover at UH. That's so exciting that you went to school with Ema. It's nice to know that someone in our network knows um, our incoming resident already. That means you probably know she's awesome. I don't see any questions in the chat. Reminder that you're, you can feel free to unmute too if you'd rather ask your question out loud. So Joseph Pruitt asks, um, so there's still one more diversity resident to hire? No, we're only having the one resident. Um, and that resident will be in a cohort with UT Austin residents that are currently in place. So they've got kind of a group of other residents um, who can relate to the process who are at various stages of the residency. But TDL only has plans to have one resident for three years. Thanks for that question, Joseph. Any other questions or thoughts from folks? By the way, thanks Alexa Height for telling me I was doing okay. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, everyone. With that, then I'm going to go ahead and shut down the forum for today. Um, thanks, everyone, so much for joining us. Um, we'll have a lot more folks presenting at the next one next month. And I hope you all have a good week and a good rest of August as we start to cool off and see some rain. <laughs> Bye, everybody.